Hi everybody, it's Chris again. Uh, here to bring you all some more answers to your questions about medical school and a little update as to what we're doing in medical school right now. Um, first off, I want to make a few announcements or some uh, get some things out there for you all to know about. Uh, I guess the first one of those is uh, wishing everybody a late uh, Happy Easter. I hope everybody had a, uh, a good holiday. Um, now, the, the announcement that I was talking about um, is that I found someone's profile here on YouTube. Uh, the username is the top pre med. Same person as etoppremed.com. Some of you might know him. He does um, some uh, short little segments on uh, tips for medical school um, and how to be uh, the most you can get out of your pre med education uh, and do the best you can on the interviews. Um, his name is Sean. He's actually a practicing physician. I don't really know where. Um, I'll ask him that in one of uh, um, the interview questions that we do. But that gets me to that point of what we're going to be doing. Um, I started talking to him a little bit on the on, uh, on YouTube, and basically what we're going to do is a little back and forth, little interview series between um, uh, him and myself to uh, get the word out there about um, you know the best ways to prepare yourself for medical school, and just to give you guys some tips. And it'll be a fun little thing to do, a little interactive thing back and forth. So be sure to start watching for that. Uh, as soon as I can get these videos uploaded, I've been having a little bit of trouble with my internet lately. Uh, then we're going to get those started. So be looking out for it. His channel's name is the Top Premed. Uh, from thetoppremed.com. His name is Sean. Really good guy. So we'll get that started up soon. Just be watching for that. I think we're going to do about five parts back and forth. So it should be it should be good. Okay, so the updates for uh, medical school where we are right now. We just got finished taking our big uh, neuro neuroscience lab practical, which is the last uh, anatomy lab practical that we're going to be doing, written practical that we're going to be doing. Uh, after this, it's just all oral exams. Um, over whatever course or system that we're on at the time. So that means we're done with the cadavers. We don't have a cadaver anymore. We have done away with them. Um, and so far, it's, um, I don't know, I'm kind of happy to be to be done with it. I think I'm going to miss it, uh, but you know, move on to other things. The exam went really well, uh, and now I'm studying for the next big exam, which is our midterm, which is over everything that we've had for the past seven and a half weeks or so. And that's why I haven't been around. I know it's been a while since I made a video, so I wanted to apologize for that. But this uh, neuro stuff and going to lab every day has made my schedule pretty crazy. So it's been next to impossible to find the time to make one of these. But um, whatever, here we are. You have some questions built out, so it should be a, a good little show this time around. So let's go ahead and get started with um, uh, with the questions. So the first question, uh, first few questions actually are going to come from a user that we've, uh, that we've had asked questions before. It's uh, uh, DBZ96 asks me, how do you study before an exam? Well, actually, that's what I'm doing right now, so I can kind of give you um, a rundown on what I'm doing. So what I do is, uh, during the week, I listen to, uh, I go to class, and that's one time that I see it. Okay. Then after that, I listen to it again at home and take notes off of it, so that's twice that I see it. And at the end of the week, I go over everything all over again. All right, so that's three times of seeing it in the week that we had the lecture. All right, so I do that for all the lectures. So by the time the exam comes around, I start studying for the final review for all the exam stuff. I've already seen it three times. Now, you might not be able to do this with your undergrad stuff. Uh, you might not have to do this or go over it that much. Chances are you probably won't. Just a few times will be just fine. Even just like just the week before would be fine. But after the, uh, after the three times of seeing it, then I start studying a week ahead of schedule, or a week before the actual exam. And during that week, I have just a few goals during that week. I want to go over everything twice, so that way I see all the lectures five times total by the time it's all said and done with. And I want to do as many practice problems as I can get my hands on. That usually works just fine, and that leads me to another question from the same user. That what's the whiteboard for? Well, I can show you what the whiteboard is for. I actually use the whiteboard to draw out a whole bunch of things. Um, I'm not the best uh, artist. I'm not really an artist at all. I can't draw worth anything, but it helps me if I draw it out, uh, such as pathways or different uh, physical structures or not, uh, anatomical structures, stuff like that, to where I can actually see what's going on. So let me swing the computer around um, and give you a glimpse of uh, what I'm talking about by drawing it out and what I mean by uh, how I use the marker board. So that is what I do with the marker board. I draw out all sorts of fun stuff, uh, which I was actually doing right there. It helps me out uh, quite a bit. Right now, I have all the stuff for um, the external, middle, and inner ear. 
Yeah, this is a lecture that I just got finished going over. So, uh, so that's the marker board is for. Same user also asked me, or someone asked me in the past, to wear glasses. I absolutely do wear glasses. I don't have them on uh, right now because I have my contacts in, so I don't need them. Um, let's see. Uh, the next next set of questions comes from a user called Live6391 asking about going from nursing school into medical school, what they should expect, uh, feeling kind of scared about it, and wondering if they're smart enough. Okay, well, the difference is between nursing school and medical school is it's a different philosophy of care. It's a different kind of care. Nurses are very holistic in their uh, in their care. They give their uh, caring for the person as a whole, both uh, emotionally and physically. Um, so it's a different kind of uh, training that you're going to get for that. So I'm not... I would be really, really leery of saying that someone's not smart enough for it. Um, it is a different kind of uh, of education, and if you want to do it, I'd say go for it. Um, you know, don't be scared to go for it. I mean, you're already a nurse; you're already gonna have enjoy doing that as a career. I would say go for it. Uh, don't let anyone tell you not that you can't. Um, I'd say go for it. Don't be scared about it. You can do it. Uh, let's see the uh, the grades get A's and B's is what you would need to get in college to be able to as a good marker or a good uh, indication of being able to survive in medical school. And in medical school, it's about passing, but the better the better you pass the subject, uh, the better your chances are for the residency that you want. Um, and tips for surviving medical school, I would say uh, time management is a plus uh, and determination, and that's for not only surviving medical school but even getting into medical school. So I wouldn't say don't be scared about it. And if, if you're wondering if you're smart enough for it, well, go take the MCAT and see how you score on the MCAT and see if they'll let you in. If they let you in, they know you can do it. Um, but uh, have faith in yourself and uh, and go for it. It's a scary process, but um, give it a go. I, I, I would say, you know, give it the old college try if you want to call it that. Uh, the best way to review for anatomy. I forgot exactly which user asked me this, but I'll go ahead and... Uh, tell you a little bit about what I do to review for anatomy, or the best way to learn anatomy. It's a question that I've emailed several of you back and forth with um, about the best way that, that I go about doing anatomy. Is I, there's, there's a few ways to go about doing it. You can learn where the things are and learn why the things are there and why they're called what they're called, or you can just straight up rote memorization with uh, just straight up memory. Um, that's kind of hard to do, especially for me. That's hard to do, so I don't do it that way. What I do is, um, I realize that from my medical terminology class, that every word that's used in medicine is either from uh, Greek or Latin, or some combination of something, and they're named the way they are because that's where the structures are, uh, okay? And if you can break down the names, right, you can usually tell where the structure is going to or from or what it's doing. So a good example of that is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Sternocleidomastoid, okay? Sterno for sternum. Uh, clido for clavicle and mastoid for your mastoid process. So as you can imagine, if you know the roots of that, you can know where the where the nerve attaches to, and understand that the nerve has to run from here down, and it'll help you find it. Uh, there's all sorts of different ones like that. Another good example of that is the uh, thyrohyoid muscle. Okay, goes from the thyroid, uh, thyroid to the uh, hyoid bone. Okay. And it's just a strap muscle right here. There's a whole lot of different ways that you can go about doing that. Um, supra, uh, uh, the transverse cervical, okay? Transverses across uh, the cervical area or your neck. Right? So if you just, that would be my best uh, best idea on how to do it. Just learn about the, um, the meanings behind the words and then figure out what's going on that way. That's the best way to do anatomy. Right. Um, last thing I wanted to mention is a, a good website or a good YouTube channel here if you're in histology class or anything with uh, microscope work is uh, Washington DC's um, YouTube channel. It's a shotgun histology series. So look at that. Breaks down everything you need to know for histology really fast in anywhere from three to five minutes and covers everything. I used that for a last minute review for the exam. And it was great. I'm glad I found it. So check that out. It's uh, Just go to Google or YouTube and search in Shotgun Histology. So that's about where we are now. Uh, I will be getting more updates to you all later on. And you'll have a great week. Email me with any more questions you got.